All right, and uh, welcome back to the second episode of this series. Uh, first of all, though, I just want to tell you thank you to everybody on Reddit who uh, left a message uh, or a comment or critique on uh, how I can improve this series. And uh, so from that, I'm going to try to keep this episode uh, a lot shorter and more precise. So last episode, we left with this problem here um, on how White can capture this one stone right here. Um, to connect his group. So if you say um, that the answer is uh, P12, then you are correct. Um, let's just play out the strongest variation black can resist here, uh, which is the tiger mouth. After that, white will Atari, uh, forcing black to connect. And then um, Hane here. The best thing black can do is just Hane again, Atari, connect, and now as you can see black is totally dead here. Um, black can try, but as you see the Liberty race is uh, white ahead by one. So as you can see that does not work for black. So black would try something else. What if black connect here? Um, since there are so many weaknesses in white shape, so white cannot play something like this, like try to net black in. And so black escapes. So if you say that this is the correct move, and if you guess this correct move as R11, then you are your reading skills are pretty strong. And uh, I would say congratulations, because this one is uh, tough to find. But this is called a soft net, where you net black in, but uh, it's not direct. Anyway, uh, if black try to connect to escape around here, as you can see, uh, black cannot. Because of this Atari right here. I mean, if black was connected here already, then yes, you can squeeze, but um, there's no way for black to escape. Anyway, that is the answer from the last uh, homework problem. And so now, I want to start today's episode with another Tsuji. Now keep in mind, the Tsuji that I shows um, are the one that I experienced myself to be in-game a lot more than usual. And you know, there's if you study Tsuji at all, there are thousands of them. But in my experiences, um, not a lot of them will show up in real game, uh, at least not at my level where I am right now anyway, so um, I guess maybe in pro games there might be or something like that, but um, anyway, we'll start with uh, this problem to the left right here. Um, black played a Hane, and white is to respond and to see if there's any way for white to connect the stone with the corner group. Um, Obviously, white cannot push here because then white, black would just run like this. White can try to um, cut, but cutting uh, doesn't seem to work very well either. So, here is a clever Tsuji um, when you have situation like this. Because of the marked stone here like this, we can connect by playing the clamp. So what this does is either create a Maya. So if black connects, then white connects on the bottom like this. But if black refuse to let um, white connect, and then white can cover with a tiger mouse like this. So as you see the crucial stone right here 
allows you to play this clamp move and um, capture these two black stone and connect the white group. So anyway, that is the Tsuji um, that I forgot to add last time that I thought was important during the real game. And today we'll move on to something else. All right, so today we're going to talk about the Chinese opening. I feel like uh, a lot of Q players uh, misunderstand this opening um, and attacks it the wrong way or opening with it at the wrong way. So, um, so the Chinese opening, if you don't know what it is, it's uh, black, three storm formation like this. There, you can also play the high Chinese, which is instead of uh, the R9 stone, you can play at the Q9 stone. Anyway, so the concept behind this opening is black is using um, the stones, the center stone, to attack white whenever white comes in. So let's say um, white just uh, plays something like uh, one here, and then black plays two here, okay? So now black has a double wing formation. So whenever white comes in, black is going to attack and uh, this white group and make profit down here. That's the basic concept of the Chinese opening, okay? Now let's say white understands that, and so white say, "Ha, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna let you um, do the f double wing formation." Well, guess what? Uh, black can also make a double wing formation this way as well. So you can see why a lot of pros they used to uh, love this opening because it's so powerful. You can just use it to attack and create profit. Um, now one way to approach the Chinese, uh, a simple way, is to play one here, and if black plays here, then white can just pull back. And this is a very peaceful way of dealing with the Chinese opening. What you don't want to do is um, approach here, okay? So basically, if you remember what I just said, um, black wants you to enter, so black can attack and take profit. Because of the stone here, it's going to be hard for white to settle. So if White approaches here, black most likely will kick. And when white does this, black jumps here, white forms a base, black will lean onto white group. The white group is not alive yet, so you definitely don't want to play like this when you're white because um, you're under pressure real early in the game and um, black is, at while attacking you, building a moil uh, down. So if you're going to approach, uh, I would say approach here at 0, 017 because it's wider and you have space to, uh, to jump out. Or Basically, that's one of the strong concepts that you should understand about opening is you want to approach the 4-4 stone on the side where you have the most space to build a knight, right? So in this case, this is the better approach compared to this approach, right? Because you're narrowed, your your space is narrowed out. If you go here and black kicks, it looks a lot better than what you had over here. But let's say if black had a stone here already, um, then the better approach would be here because after the kick, you have a, a, a space for uh, enough space to make a, a base at least here. But if black had a stone here, this would not be the good um, approach here now because of this stone. Because now if black kicks, you only have a space for a two eye for a two uh two space jump right here. And black white is kind of narrow here. Okay? So you see the concept of that? Basically that's the concept of um, that's an opening concept. So more space here, so you approach from this side. 
And if black didn't have a stone there, well, definitely you want to approach. So now we have this, and let's say um, black played this, and then white played this. Okay, this used to be very, very, very popular. Um, I mean, it is still popular now during, um, with amateurs. But white, as white um, pros, they prefer not to play this anymore because of this invasion right here. Which, uh, I'll run out this sequence. I won't try to explain too much because it is a complex sequence. But uh, the, with the result, uh, you can see why white doesn't prefer to play this anymore. So wedge in, push down, Atari connects connects. As you can see, white has a lot of influence, right? But black has a lot of points in the corner. And the 3-3 three, three is very open right now. So black, white would need another move in there um, to defend the whole corner. And it gave black a lot of points. But the influence is good. It just um, a lot of pros, they stopped playing it because of the sequence right here. Another reason why white uh, stop playing the k16 move is because let's say black did something like this then white defends the corner uh black has a nice moyo setup and then black also has good follow-ups um to uh build the moyo outside because since this there's a weakness right here so white has to uh kind of link here and then black will play this. And this is uh, Tasuji to uh, develop the center. Black will double Hane, or double lean in here. And if, <coughs> excuse me, if white Atari from this side, as you can see here, black center is getting very, very large. And because of this um, combination and the other combination, um, you don't see white playing this move anymore. But to be honest, I do still play it from time to time because not everybody knows the two techniques to handle. So instead, white just um, slide down here and black responds to protect the corner and then white will play this. This is a very peaceful opening so far. And then black will take this point. And here, then, uh, as white, you have a couple, a few um, of way to answer is here, uh, here, or even here to kind of uh, poke at this structure here. Um, as black, black can also approach uh, first, white will protect the corner, and then now black has a lot of options. Either one, two, or three, right? Um, each move is different uh, in a way. So let's say you play three, then as a black, if you play three, then you say, oh, um, I'm going to put more emphasis in the corner here. And if you play one, then you put more emphasis with this stone, this area out here. So let's say if black plays um, one, right? And if white try to go into tw to the corner here, this stone is not going to be able to help out this stone very much because it's so far away. Like This stone's not going to be able to help with the attack of this stone very much. But if black were to play something like this, then now you know, it's closer and it, it will get into the fight. And if black plays here, it strengthened this group, but then like now it's way out here, so uh, the corner is very vulnerable right now. Here, let's take a look at um, when black plays K4 for the next move. So white would invade the, into the corner, black protects, White slide back, black slides in, securing some space here. White try to build a base, 
black jumps, threatened to seal white in, white is not completely alive, so white must jump. Okay, so this is a basic shape that you might see in a game where uh, the Chinese opening is popular, or somebody's playing the Chinese opening. So as white here, this is a technique that um, a lot of Don player will play. If you watch a lot of Don player, you'll see this, um, this move here. Uh, <coughs> so here we see the continuation with black pushing down, um, white protects, black pokes. Okay, so as a Q, when black pokes like this, um, as white, you would respond like so. And then black will poke underneath. And now this group is not yet alive, and it's surrounded by black stones. So if white gets attacked and black keep pushing this way, it's going to create a lot of profits here, right? So as a Don, before you even respond to this, you got to ask, is there any forcing move that I can play to help my group out? And the answer is yes, of course. The S9 is a very basic uh, forcing move here. Um, you see it in a lot of Don's game. Um, whenever a Don player has a group that needs to settle, most of the time you will see this play on the second line if there's a black stone here. So what this stone does is if black covers on the inside, white will push, and you see the weakness here, right? So black can either protect the weakness here or protect this stone. If it Atari's the stone, white Atari's, and here you can see black fail. So what black cannot uh, honey from the inside. So instead, black honey from the outside, white draws back, and then now black has to protect this right here. If it doesn't, and it still cuts, then uh, White has a forcing move here. Something uh, <coughs> along this line. <coughs> so instead, black will protect here, and then white connects here. And the difference between these exchange and without the exchange is night and day because now this white group is alive. Alrighty, it's going to be hard. Um, black can try to do a monkey jump, but it's going to be hard to kill the white's group here. So white is considered alive. Even something like this is not going to be able to kill it. So this exchange is very important to remember. Um, small moves like this uh, makes a huge difference uh, in the swing of the game um, between Don and Q, right? So a Q player will just connect here. And after you connect black place here, and now you're running, um, this one is not alive as you can see here <coughs> excuse me now let's take a look at what if black is more aggressive with the move this kosumi move right here um, if white were to just block normally because of this stone here this jump for white is not good to build a base um, so I would say white is playing into black's hand right here. So um, do you think there is a better way to respond? And um, I'll leave that to you to decide and uh, figure out for next time uh, when we continue uh, to look at this.